Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here with my grandkids at the Chattanooga Zoo at the Hiawassee Research Center to look at the hellbenders that are they're working on saving here. Hellbenders are the third largest amphibian in the world. They're incredible organisms, and they're endangered because of basically habitat destruction, which I'll talk about in this video. So check out this video on hellbenders here with my grandkids at the Chattanooga Zoo. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Here at the Chattanooga Zoo, they have a model of a hellbender, and this shows how big they can actually get. They're the third largest amphibian in the world, but they're the largest amphibian in North America. These giant salamanders may measure up to 24 to maybe 30 inches long and weigh several pounds. But most of the adults you'll find in streams will be smaller than that, probably closer to 15 to 18 inch range. We are in the Hiawassee Hellbender Research and Education Facility. This is a state-of-the-art breeding and research building that you can find here at the Chattanooga Zoo, which is also set up to interact with the public and educate the public about hellmenders and conserving their endangered habitat. The public interface of the Hiawassee Hellbender Research and Education Facility has some great exhibits where you can look at hellbenders and see them up close looking just like they would and moving in a very similar environment that they would exist in. They love these fast-flowing, well-oxygenated, clear, rocky bottom streams. And here you can see them doing their thing and moving about the exhibit. Hellbenders are not known for their beauty, and they come with many very interesting names across the range of the Appalachians, including water dog, Mud Puppy, Devil Dog, Allegheny Alligator, Grampus, Mud Dog, Mud Devil, and many other names. The name Hellbender is thought to have come from the early settlers who came here and first saw it. And of course, they'd never seen anything like it before. And they thought it looked like a creature from hell and a creature that was hellbent on coming back to Earth. Another funny name of the hellbender is the snot otter. And it's interesting because it does tell you something about its biology. If you pick one of these up, it'll feel very slimy because they've got heavy secretions on them. The slime layer will protect them from pathogens and it will also deter predation, making them distasteful to eat. Some salamanders are terrestrial or have terrestrial life stages and live on land at some point. But the hellbender is fully aquatic and lives its what, entire life today? in the water. The hellbender gets its creepy look from that wrinkled skin that increases the surface area for oxygen to move into its body. Because they are fully aquatic for their entire life cycle, and given their large size, they require clear, cold, well-oxygenated water. And if any of those factors are missing, the hellbenders are not going to be able to survive. So this is why their habitat is so critical to them. And preserving these cold water, clear, rocky bottom streams is essential to the success of the species. Here at the research center, they're helping the hellbender populations out by collecting their eggs when they're laid, yeah. bringing them here to the facility to raise them until they're a size that makes them very successful and takes them out of a life stage where there's very, very high predation upon them. And they're reintroducing these uh, reared offspring into the wild again to repopulate or increase the population of their existing streams. Hellbenders will feed on many aquatic invertebrates, including aquatic insects, they love eating crayfish. They'll catch small fish to eat. And basically, they're a sort of a top predator in their environment. Hellbenders are not venomous, but given their large size and their bony palate, 
if they feel cornered or you're roughly picking the one up, there's a potential that they could bite. The biology of hellbenders is fascinating. And one really fascinating thing about them is that the males are the ones that stay and protect the eggs. The males will create a den under a large flat rock and invite females to come in there and lay eggs. He may have several females laying eggs under that one rock, with each female laying 250 to 400 eggs. He may have a thousand or more eggs under that rock, and he will stay with them and defend them and protect them until those eggs have had a chance to hatch and the larvae have begun to start absorbing the yolk sacs. Can you point Me and the grandkids had a fantastic time here at the Chattanooga Zoo, visiting the Hellbender Research Facility and learning so many new things from the very knowledgeable staff that was here. And hey, if you like what I do on this channel, please give me a like and subscribe. And also leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, and turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So this has been Frank Taylor with Henry and Lulu at the Chattanooga Zoo Iowa Sea Research Center. Bye. Hi, my name's Lucy and I'm the main of the video team. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.